Well hello again everybody and welcome back to the channel. About 12 months ago I bought this, the Sigma 150-600 to contemporary zoom lens. I bought it for my aviation photography, I didn't know if I was going to keep it so I bought it on 0% finance with the idea of keeping it one year and if it didn't match up I was going to sell it and recover the costs. So keep watching to the end of the video and find out what I decide to do. You're part of the photography community that gives me so much. So it's time to give back to all of you. It's my mission to inspire and pass on my knowledge, passion and skills. You can subscribe using the watermark button on the screen. Ring your bell to make your subscription count. Please stay to the end and comment. It's your feedback that keeps the channel going. Okay, so let's give you some of the backstory to start with. Um, about 12 months ago, I decided that it was time for me to upgrade from um, crop sensor um, format to a full frame camera. So I upgraded to the Canon 5D Mark IV, which I'm exceptionally pleased with. Um, but being an aviation photographer, um, as well as a landscape photographer, I needed that extra bit of reach. I needed something that was actually going to give me the same sort of field of view and the same um, zoom in on some of these fast jet aircraft and prop aircraft as I was getting with my original Canon 300 millimeters. Now, good glass is really, really expensive. And the best option at the market at the time for me seemed to be the Sigma 150 to 600. If you want to find out the full story about it, why I bought that, then you want to have a look at this video. I'll put a link of it up at the end and you can find out my full reasons for upgrading. But basically, um, I did upgrade and um, I did it in such a way that if it didn't work out for me, then I could sell the lens a year on. It will have cost me a few hundred pounds, but basically I could recover most of the cost. So I'm here today to tell you um, whether I'm going to keep it or whether I'm going to sell it. And, uh, and I'll go through some of the points with that. So the first thing we're going to look at is aviation photography and how that worked out for me. Okay, so aviation photography. Um, one of the key things to think about when you're buying and using a lens this big and you're going to be hand holding it, potentially using at air shows or um, on safari or, or, or whatever. If you're going to do a lot of hand holding and following fast action where a monopod or a tripod would be really quite prohibitive, you need to think about the weight and if you're comfortable doing it. Now I just want to check my facts here so I'll make sure I get them right. Um, this lens weighs 1.95 kilograms. This is a contemporary version. Now Sigma do do a sports version of the lens but it's worth considering that the sports version is 2.86 kilograms. Now the lens and camera combination as you see them here together is 2.75 kilos. So if you go for the sports version of this lens you're going to be carrying near on three and a half kilos. Typical day at an air show can be anything from four to seven hours hand holding this lens most of the time. So it really is something that you want to think about using. Um, a monopod or a gimbal head is another option and we're going to get onto those a little bit in a minute. Um, one of the things I did with this lens to actually make it a bit easier for me to hand hold it was I started using it with a hand strap. So let me just take it off the tripod for you and show you what that is. So there's a strap on the side of this camera and uh, I can tighten this up around my wrist and that helps to take some of the weight off my fingers and straps it to the back of the hand. It makes it much more stable and much better to use. Um, and I found that I could do that quite comfortably because when it's fully extended, this lens is really quite long. Um, it's something that you really need to think about. Um, one of the other options that you can go for is a monopod. And I'll show you the camera set up on a monopod um, later on. Um, in terms of autofocus system for this lens, um, it's a bit difficult to judge autofocus because obviously it depends on the camera body that you're using it on. And I'm well aware that you guys might be using it on Sony's, um, Nikon's and other, other manufacturers as well. Um, but on the Canon it worked exceptionally well. You can lock it, you can lock it sort of at infinity to 10 meters, 2.8 to 10 meters to stop some of that, that hunting. Um, you've got an autofocus mode, manual focus and manual override where you can use the manual focus at the same time and override it if it starts hunting for the subject. Now on the Canon 5D Mark IV it's got a fantastic feature where you can um, modify and tune your autofocus system and that's what I do for my aviation photography. I find that it gives me much better performance, it locks onto the subjects, stays locked on and uh, gives me great view. So I was really quite pleased with the autofocus performance of this camera. When you're hand holding, it's also got optical stabilization. It's got two modes, mode one, mode two, and of course off. 
off is for when you're mounting it on a tripod. Uh, mode one is general use and two works well for aviation photography because it works when you're panning. I actually left it in mode one quite a bit because you quite often find that you're, you're moving in various dimensions at the same time. So I think two would be, you, you, mode two would be you'd have to know that you've got a real good pan across the length of the runway or, or something and knew what you were doing but I found that really good as well there are custom settings that you can set on this lens if you purchase the additional dot from Sigma and plug the lens in you can tune it that little bit more but that's not something I did so let's have a look at the camera on the um, monopod okay so um, here we are with the um, camera mounted on the monopod um, I use this at aviation photography um, events sometimes. The reason I used it was because although we had the um, optical stabilisation on it, I wanted to use some very, very low shutter speeds uh, when photographing some proper aircraft, uh, helicopters actually. Um, the picture that I the in question, which I'm going to put up on the screen for you, was taken on the monopod with the camera mounted um, as it is now at a 50th of a second. Now I left the stabilisation on just to give it that little bit of extra help because really 50th of a second with a 600mm lens, you know, is, is really quite extreme. But I got a really good result with this and I found that actually using the camera on the, um, on, on the monopod was really a good way of doing it. And if I got myself in the right position, I could pan really quite smoothly um, and get some really good results using the um, using this as a support. One of the things I did find was that um, the that using it on the tripod um, was far too restrictive. And I'll tell you what, you can see why when you consider the actual balance of this lens why um, photographers would use um, a, a gimbal with such a large lens and I'll, and I'll come back to that later on when we, when we look at another subject. So in general, aviation photography, um, the lens performed really, really well. Um, it was great handheld using the strap. I really do recommend that. It was good on the monopod for some of the prop stuff and uh, it performed exactly as I wanted to. So um, I've put a few images up already, but let's have a look at a few more images before we go on to another subject. So um, that was last year, that was 2019. Um, all those images were taken at air shows last year and uh, really pleased with the result. So by, the, by November last year, I bought my tickets and I'm ready to go. Really looking forward to this season, getting this lens out again and seeing how it can really perform and using it in anger. Now I've got a bit of experience with it. Um, boom, January 2020. Well, we all know what happened. We're not going to dwell on it. But basically, I've not been able to get back out and use this lens at an air show since. But that's not necessarily a bad thing, because what it's done is it's meant that I've actually explored and looked at other subjects. So I started looking at some um, wildlife photography in my garden at home. You may have seen these videos already. seen them do this before on the other main feeder where they dart in and out so I daren't take my eyes off my setup because I don't want to miss them. The only problem is at this time of the morning the um, light levels are still quite low. So completely different subject um, same lens, completely an entirely different setup, much calmer. Um, the lens was set up on this tripod in a hide that I made up. 
um, I'd found somewhere to sit down. It was a really quite relaxing way of doing the photography. But how would the lens perform? Um, in, in terms of actually handling the weight of the lens, um, obviously I wasn't hand holding it, it was mounted on this tripod. Now if I just show you now the, the diff some of the difficulties that I had with this type of head, um, you know, it, it moves in all kinds of directions and if you want to move the lens you've got to tilt it on here and it's really not that, not that easy. And the reason I say it's not that easy for the subject is because if you want to take a picture of a bird um, and you want to be able to move it in these various different planes and directions, this isn't the best head for it. So although it performed very, very well, um, I would recommend that actually you look at changing the system and, and how you hold it. Maybe I could have used the monopod, it would have been easier, but you know, I was sat there for three or four hours and I wanted to drink my cup of coffee and eat my chocolate digestive, so I didn't want to be hold, hand holding the camera all the time. Um, so I, I can really see now why a long lens such as this, it, or, or any, any long lens, would work really well on a very well balanced gimbal, that you could just leave it there free floating and move the lens around as you need to to take the pictures. So that would be an improvement and an option for it. But generally, um, it worked exceptionally well. Um, now, as I said, I can fine tune and, and use the focus system on the Canon 5D Mark IV differently to some other cameras. I'm able to tune the focus system on it and I did the same for my for my bird photography as well. Aviation photography, I tend to use a wider area sort of focus. Not, not the full screen, but I'll use an expanded number of focus points or I'll use an area focus so that I've got a better chance of picking up those fast moving aircraft streaking through the sky. What I found for the small bird photography, and we're talking about, you know, small garden birds in the UK. We're not talking about eagles. Um, we're talking about sparrows and blue tits and, and, and uh, finches, very small at birds. What I found was that using an area focus, it was too easy for the camera to, on the lens combination to lock onto the branch, the feed, the background or something else. So I had to use a single point of focus. Um, and using this single point of focus and back button focusing, I was able to snap the focus onto the bird. When I perfected doing this, and I mean by perfected it, not, not the lens combination, but me actually lining things up quickly enough, it was remarkably fast. This lens focused really, really quickly and snapped straight into focus on the subjects. The results were really quite pin sharp. Sure, I was shooting at a slightly higher ISO I would have liked than I would like to have used, but that was just down to the weather conditions. But the actual performance of the lens was fantastic. Um, I didn't use the um, any sort of uh, focus limit or anything on it. I had it on full focus range um, because the birds were close to me then they were further away backwards and forwards so I was really exercising the focal range of the lens and also the focusing of the lens as well and it performed, performed really really well. So that's why I say really for evaluating this lens it wasn't a bad a bad thing at all that I tried a new subject and it's a subject I am going to try again soon. So if you want to find out more about how the lens got on, how it performed in detail on that, then I'll, I'll put up links to those videos at the end as well. So I guess it brings us down to one thing now. It brings me down to the verdict. Do I keep it or do I get rid of it? Okay, so yeah, this is the big question, isn't it? Do I keep it or do I sell it? Okay, so I upgraded to a full frame system from a crop sensor. I already had the Sigma um, 300mm L series lens um, and I was just looking for a little bit more reach when I went to full frame. And to be honest, the 300mm lens is fantastic. Um, it's bitingly sharp and the sensor on the 5D Mark IV is so good that I can zoom right in and get some fantastic detail without introducing a lot of noise. So cropping in is an option. 
but this is fantastic. This is really, really, really good. It's too heavy to take out with me every day. It'll never go in the camera bag when I go out shooting landscape photographs. But for aviation photography, which I love doing and I'm going to get to, you're damn right I'm going to keep it. So if you want to buy one of these lenses, you're going to have to go and get it somewhere else because this lens is not for sale. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed using it. I'm going to be using it again. I'm going to continue with the with the bird photography as well. And uh, I hope to get out soon and, uh, and, and enjoy that. So... Um, yep, yeah, I'm going to keep the lens. It's fantastic. If you want one of your own, then I'll include a link um, in the description at the end. And uh, if you click on that, then it, it is affiliate link. It just helps support this channel and, and keeps keeps me going, so to speak. Um, so by all means do it. But I do thoroughly recommend it. If you're into aviation photography, if you're into wildlife photography or whatever, go for this lens. The only decision then, I guess, is whether you go for the contemporary version or whether you go for the sports version. This is an £800 lens. The sports version, you're looking at a £1,300, £1,400 lens. That all depends, obviously, on exchange rates and, and the current market conditions and everything. But you're looking at a lens which is two-thirds, if not twice the price of this one, and almost twice the weight. What do you get with it? You get a few more extra features. You get some weather sealing. Um, and although I can't prove it because I haven't got both lenses, some people have quoted um, that basically the contemporary lens, because it's got less weight to it, actually focuses a little bit faster than the sports lens. I've got no way of proving that. Take it as you find it. Would I go for the sports lens? I suppose maybe if I was out in all weathers every single day and it was my prime lens that I was using continuously, um, I probably would. But I'm an occasional wildlife photographer, an occasional aviation photographer. So for me, this is absolutely perfect. I can take that other £800 that I've saved and I could go out and buy a whole load of other gear which would help me with my landscape photography as well. That's a decision for you guys to make. But in short, if you're looking for a 150-600 to 600 lens, I'd recommend this one. I hope you're enjoying the video. Maybe you would like to carry on. So try these suggestions next. I want to share more knowledge, more skills, more passion and stories about photography with you. So think about subscribing. If you do, ring the bell. It will make your subscription count. If you have time, comment. I will see you on the next video. Get out there and enjoy your photography.